How's that? Is that, that what we call it, yo yo? That was great. All right, let's go to Salar in Fairfax, Virginia. Salar. Hi, Brad. Thank you for taking my call. My pleasure. Um, so, my question is. I'll try and keep it brief. So I applied for my uh, permanent residence, I-480, on the common card a few days ago. But um, I have my advanced parole, and I was thinking about leaving the country. But then um, uh, in 2012, I had a criminal charge of possession of marijuana. And that charge, a final disposition, was not guilty. And my plea was not guilty. And this... Uh, if you were not if you were not guilty, then you can travel. It has nothing to do with what you were charged with. It has to do with the final disposition. So you were charged with possession of marijuana. I assume it was a small, simple amount, and you were found yes. not guilty. And that's your only case. You you're free to travel. Okay, so when I come back, they're not going to give me problems at the border. I can I can never these. I can never guarantee you they won't. When you say a problem, they have the right to yeah. ask you. And what you yeah. should do is bring your disposition with you from the court. Okay. Uh, and if okay. and you don't have to show it to them, you don't even have to bring it up. But if they do ask you, say, here's my disposition. Case was dismissed. Let me in. Okay. All right. Awesome. That's and, simple. And, yeah. And I got a reckless driving charge last year, but it was a no lay prosecute. Then also um, bring that as well, because that's also dismissed. Okay. Awesome. And stop so much. getting in trouble, man. Because you're not going to get so lucky the third time. Okay, sounds All right. good. I okay. won't. Thank you so All much. All right, take care. Appreciate it, man. All right, let's go to Chantel in West Palm Beach, Florida. Very near Rambo the Parrot. Mm -hmm. Chantel. Maybe Chantel knows Chantel. The Can you imagine if it was Chantel going, let me out, let me out. <laughs> Chantel. Where Hello. Sh Hello, Chantel. How are you? I'm okay. What can I, I, what can I do to help? I have a question. Mm -hmm. I have a question. My husband um, has a felony case going on, and he has three charges. However, I'm trying to... I spoke with an immigration lawyer. They said I would be qualified to apply for the VAWA. So my question is, if I go ahead and apply for the VAWA, and if the case goes to trial and I refuse to testify in terms of do not show up, would that deny my VAWA application? All right, so these are two different things, okay? Number one is, it sounds like your husband was charged with a felony for yes, domestic violence. Yes. Okay, and you are a witness to that. So that is I'm a victim. That is, right, I'm the victim. You're a witness uh -huh. and a victim. That's a VAWA case. If you make a charge against somebody and you refuse to testify that in of itself could be a criminal charge so now if you know the government wants they can charge you criminally you know potentially with that and then you would cause a problem why don't you want to testify um the beginning it was i wasn't the one who called it was the neighbor who called why the do you why do you not want to testify you don't want him to be in trouble no, it's not that. It's just that I was thinking about the kids because we have two kids together. Yeah, I understand and that. But you would, you would, you know, you need to hire a criminal defense attorney if you're planning on not testifying because that in itself could turn into criminal charges against you. I don't know the potential okay. for that because I'm not a criminal defense lawyer, but there is potential for that, and that can cause a problem. All right. Uh, I assume. Okay. I assume. Nine out of ten times, your husband will take a plea and would not would not go to trial. But certainly, you need to speak to a criminal defense attorney because by not cooperating with the with the district attorney, you don't want to have charges brought against you. No, and um, because what happened? I wrote a letter to the state attorney asked if they could drop the charges. They're not going to drop the charge. They They're said, not going to drop the charges because the charges yes. are not from you. The charges are brought by the people. Okay, you are okay. you you did not bring any charges up against your husband. You are a victim and a witness, but the charges are brought by the people of the state of Florida against your husband. And whether you cooperate or not, ultimately your husband most likely will be found guilty anyway because the police came and saw everything that was going on. Okay, so it's wise for me to testify then. It's wise for you to cooperate, absolutely. 
Okay. All right. All right. It's not about testify. It's about cooperate. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. All right, Chantel. Let's go to Siri calling from the Apple store. No, Sri <laughs> calling from Fremont, California. I read it wrong. Sri. Thought it was Siri for a right. second. Sri, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. How are you? Good, good. What's going on? Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Uh, I'm married to a uh, permanent resident. Mm -hmm. So, mm, so we, we are not uh, filing the taxes jointly, but uh, we have everything like bills, uh, pg and and everything uh, which comes to home. So, um, we have a bank account. Is a problem for that? Yes, you have to have if a joint tax return. Tax. Yes, have a joint tax return. You don't have Yes, do account. it. Go amend it. Go do it. You want to know the quickest okay. way to getting a Stokes interview? Show up with something other than joint tax returns. You want to know the quickest way uh, for immigration? Yeah, the quick listen, Shri, listen, listen to the words yeah. that come out of my mouth. The quickest okay. way to get immigration yeah. to not believe you are in a bona fide marriage with your spouse is to show up with okay. something other than a joint tax return. Quickest okay. way. Go do it. Go yeah. amend the taxes. Okay. And uh, I have other question. Uh, she's about to go for the interview for the for her citizenship. Yes. And um, uh, and um, she 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 has a problem with her case before, like uh, you know, she was uh, uh, sent back from the airport like 15 years ago. I don't know why. And if she got turned back to the airport three years ago, she got deported. No, no, she was uh, no 15 years ago. Okay, I would need to see why she did, did the government know when she got her green card that she was previously deported. Because when you get ter when you say the, what one second when you say the immigration she, knows hear, that, me, yeah. hear me out when you say got turned around at the airport, that yeah. means she got deported. She was found inadmissible at the airport 15 years ago, which means a the, five year which was one second that, yeah. which was a five year bar most likely for some sort of misrepresentation. Somebody had to file for her and do waivers. Those were all done? Yeah, it's done. Okay, then she's okay then. Okay. All right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do your joint tax return. Wally in Boston, Massachusetts. Wally. Or Welly. Wellin. Wellin. Hi, Wellin. yeah, Wellin. How are you, Wellin? I'm okay. Thank you for answering my call. What can I do to help? So, okay. So my sister was on a TPS and... From what country? So my relate. What country? From again? Your sister was Liberia. on TPS from, from Liberia. She got married. Yes. And then what happened? Yes. So she got married and then she got a two-year green card. Okay. She could be expired this, this year. And she got divorced. Her husband, she, came, she went to Africa last year. So when she came back, her husband divorced her. So she got divorced. So she wanted to know if she... She's qualified for. She has to file to remove the conditions of her permanent residence. She's not going to be able to do the Liberian amnesty. You have, if you get a two year green card before you try to get a green card some other way, you have to make an application to remove the conditions of your permanent residence first. And if she got divorced from her husband, the way to do it is here's the divorce, here's the I 751 application, and right in the middle is all the documents that show me and my spouse were living in a bona fide marriage. But she's not gonna be able to do the Liberian amnesty because she, until she goes through the process of removing the conditions, that she can't do anything else. And that process is an 18 month process. And by the time that process is done, the Liberian amnesty is over because it's only good for one year. All right, hold on if you need help. Let's go to Peter in Miami, Florida, Peter. Yeah, good night. What's good night? What's up? Um, I'm gonna ask a few questions. Um, I came in, I came to the states in April of this last year to work on a work permit, and I met a lady in May, and we fell fell in love and got a relationship, and we got married. All right, so. Everything was going good until she suddenly told me that she's having 
an affair? He's an emotional oh. problem. What's the emotional he, problem? Like, she thought she was ready for a relationship, but and she, she was wasn't. Not. It happens. And she was not. It happens. So what a, happened, right. So what happened is my work visa expired in October. And after, in like in about the last week of November, last week of November, she started telling me all this stuff. And that she doesn't want a relationship right now. So we're going to send in her paperwork to apply for a green card. But she decided that she, she doesn't want a relationship anymore. That's not going to work out either. So I'm asking you guys, what should I do? Well, there's not a, you, I, you, I, try to go for counseling. Try to get her counseling if you love each other. Uh, if if it's a situation where she wants to be in a relationship, but it's you, she doesn't want to be in a relationship with you. There's nothing you can do, you know. And you know you would have to get divorced and find another way to get a green card. Uh, but it doesn't sound like there's abuse in the relationship. It just sounds like the woman's having a breakdown. And I don't know if it's a breakdown because you're causing it, or it's a breakdown because she's just having a breakdown and has nothing to do with you. I don't know. But you gotta yeah. you gotta you gotta solve the you gotta solve the root problem of her breakdown no. and see if you can save the marriage. Yeah. Other than that, you gotta get a divorce and find another way. No, the marriage is over. The marriage is over. All right, so I'm just calling so you then guys get, Then get divorced, the then get divorced and fall in love again. So get a divorce. Get divorced and fall in so, love again. All right, so is it is it gonna affect me being in the country? There's no, there's no, there's no such thing as Filing a vow because when the marriage breaks up, I've said this a thousand times. You can mm -hmm. try to work things out with your spouse and get back together. You can file a vow. You can get divorced and remarry. Those are your options. That's everybody's option. You haven't described anything that would even remotely sound like a vow case. This sounds like the woman just had a breakdown, and it's unfortunate, but that's what it is. Okay. All right, so hold on. You need a divorce and an immigration consultation. Both. Let's go to Brandon in Hackensack, New Jersey. Brandon. Hey, how are you doing, man? How are you? Uh, not too bad. So, I got married in 2017. Mm -hmm. And me and my wife were supposed to move in together, but she had like an anxiety attack. You and, and, you and Peter! Like, both! We get with well, women with a, butterflies in their stomach. They get scared. A, wow. So she she had an anxiety attack, and at the time we decided that the best thing for her was for her to go and stay with her mother. Mm -hmm. So she we, we kind of got back on her, on her feet, and things worked out. She lives in Georgia, so we got an apartment there. Right. I sent in my paperwork. Uh, I have an interview scheduled for the... 21st of this month. Right. I'm a little bit concerned about evidence because all we have, we have pictures here and but there. But you're not living, to, you're not, but you're not living together right now, so it's a problem. No, we got, we got an apartment. In Georgia. You, are you living together so, right now with her? Yes, we're living in. We're all right, living so if you're in living Georgia, together, so you're going to be able to prove it. All right, yeah, and I if and if there was an issue of, you know, things did, things were rocky for a little bit, she moved out, you're back together. You'll just have to explain. That's what happened. Okay. All right. So, if you need if you need help, hold on one second. All right. Okay. All right. Let's go to Sid in Denver, Colorado. Sid. <laughs> Sid. Yes. How are you? Hi. Hi. I'm doing good. Thank you. What can I do to help yeah. you? Yeah, um, I have some questions that is bothering me. Um, the first one is that um, I'm talking about my nieces. I have nieces back in Congo. Back in where? So they were living back in where? In Congo. In Congo. In Colombia. In Colombia. No, no, Congo. Congo. Got it. Africa. Yes. Okay. Yes. So they were living with my mom and the bomb. My sister traveled a long time ago. We don't know where she is. But they were living with my mom. And How my old are these girls now? Passed. How old are these girls? The first one is 11, going to 12. And the other one is like 9. And the other one is like 8. Are you, are you a citizen, Sid? 
Yes, please. All right, so what you want to do is you want to adopt these children and bring them here. You got a missing mother and no dad. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, the mother is not that we're living with my, my mom. Okay, yeah, so, all right, away. so, so, who's, so they were living with your mom who just passed away. Who's raising these yes. girls now? Because the mother's gone, and I assume I never heard, I never heard you mention the dad. Yeah, the, the father never been in the picture. Where's so the, where, where, the mother's disappeared? Who's raising these kids now? They're living by themselves? Oh, now they are with my baby sister. She's 21. All right, so what needs to happen is uh, in Denver, Colorado, you need to do what's called the pre-adoption. And at the okay. same time, you need to go into the courts in Congo and have the mother stripped of her parental rights and the father stripped of their parental rights because they abandoned the child. Uh, and mm -hmm. then bring the children over here as orphans. And then yeah. do the adoption here. We can help you with all of that. It's a process. It takes about nine to 12 months. So hold on one second. Hello, Brad. How, How are, you are you tonight? Good. Yeah, I have a question. Um, I have a sister here. I petitioned for my mom mm -hmm. this year, make five years. Great. But my uh, my question is, could my 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 sister was here? She came on a visiting visa and she didn't go back. So can my mother file for her, or because she was here before my mother? Yeah. Uh, got one, to once visa. once your mom has a green card, she can file for your sister. Absolutely. Even if she was here before my mother. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let her file the I-130. How old is your sister? Um, uh, 38. Yeah. You gotta, your mom's got to file an I-130. It'll take several years, four, five, six years, whatever it is. And then she'll probably have to do a provisional waiver, go home and come back unless the laws change. She would have to go home to I'll get do a, it there? Do a provisional waiver at the end to go home, come back for about two weeks. You do a provisional waiver here. You get your provisional waiver approved here. You then go home. You then come back. It's like touch home, come back. And but that'll be five, six years down the line. Let's see what the laws are. Five, six years. In the meantime, let your mom file for her. And you said it will take five to six years. At, at the present time, that's what it is. So if I had put in her paper um, before. Um, the five years with my mother, it would have been less. Correct. Okay. Let your mom file for her now. That's the key point. So let her file. I want. Let file. I want thirty. Correct. But so for me, if I would file for her, it would It'd take too much longer. Let your mom. Let your mom do it as a resident. Okay, Brad. Thank you so You're much. Welcome. All right. Let's go to Murad in Yonkers. Murad. Hello, everybody. You? Thank you so much for taking my call. My pleasure. Thank you. Um, I have a small question. Yesterday, I had my citizenship interview, mm -hmm. and the interview was scheduled after a mandamus. So what happened is I went to that interview, and everything went well for that civic test, the English test. You know, she went through the uh, application. But this is why I'm concerned. After that, she asked me for an additional statement, and she placed me under oath again and literally spent an hour asking me too many personal questions like where's your dad where's your mom how old were you when you came to the united states how much money you sent to your dad how much money you sent to your mom all of these kind of weird questions that has nothing to do um, with whether you become a citizen or not so this is yeah, did so, they did they ask you for any additional documents or that was it no no that she when she did actually all these uh, questions she print them out and she had me sign all these okay, papers. Okay, fine. And, and, uh, if, and I'm just asking, like, is this something happens with a lot of people or just no, only just because you. we have a mandamus or... No, mate, I don't know what country you're from. I'm from Jordan. Uh, because you come from a Muslim country and because you did the mandamus. What you should do at this point is you wait 120 days. Mm -hmm. If after 120 days you have no response from immigration... You mm -hmm. don't. You see, your mistake was doing the mandamus on a citizenship. You should have done what's called a de novo review. A de novo uh -huh. review is also done in federal court, but instead of asking a federal judge to make immigration give you an interview, what a de novo review does is takes the file out of immigration, lets a federal judge decide on your citizenship, where you'll get much, oh. or you'll have a much fairer result. So yeah, now you had, can, now, had, uh, now, like three years waiting right, for the right. interview. Now you cannot do anything for mm -hmm. 
a de, no, a de novo review, what the law says is you can request a de novo review if you go on a citizenship interview and you have no result after 120 days. So you mm. wait the 120 days and then you hit them with a de novo review. It's in federal court. Goodbye, lady who just took all my information under oath. De novo means new review. The judge looks at it from a blank slate. Uh, good. I uh, let you know, just the mandamus is still on file, so we didn't drop the case yet. Good. Keep it so, going. Is it, and, and then what so you... And what, so I don't have to right. do anything after that. No, and then what you should do is then... I, I'm not sure off the top of my head whether you would amend the complaint to do a de novo review or withdraw the mandamus and just file a new de novo review. That's just a procedural thing. Uh -huh. I would have to figure out for you. Okay. All right. Just a small question related to this. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, my dad is not doing well back home, and I need to go home go. immediately. Is that go. something safe yeah. to do? Go. Yeah, just don't stay All out right. for too long. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Let's go to Gene in South Bend, Indiana. Gene. Gene. Hello? Hi, Gene. Good. Uh, uh, I'm, calling, I'm calling from South Bend, Indiana. Uh, my question is, uh, I came here 2013 with a visiting visa, and uh, when I get there, I apply for asylum, but asylum was denied. The time I applied for asylum, I applied even for the green card, the rotary. And then I applied on my side and my wife, and then my wife should get, uh, should get uh, selected and even me on her case. I will fill up the paperwork and my daughter, they ask me to go to Africa in order to get a visa. I refused to go there because I was overstay. They were, they was going All right, to, Gene, Gene, to Gene, Gene, for... Gene, Gene. All right, so you came yes. here. You came here. You filed for asylum. Your wife won the lottery. So your wife and daughter came with green cards, but you never went home. You're now. What happened on your asylum case? You got ordered deported, and you're still here in America. No, I still here in America. They denied my case. And then uh, we, I went to court in Detroit. And, and you lost that and case too? Never, and then uh, when I went to Detroit, they never uh, gave me asylum. Okay, then, so you uh, lost that case too. So that means the judge ordered you deported. Your wife has a green card? Is she a citizen now? No, no, not yet. She oh. came here 2015. All right, so two things. One, we got to see what happens on that asylum case, but it sounds like you got ordered deported. Two, we got to make your wife a citizen as quickly as possible, which will be sometime in 2020. So that way, once she becomes a citizen, if you have been ordered deported, we can try to reopen your case based on a bona fide marriage to a U.S. citizen. But that would all start from me getting your records and seeing what's going on. So hold on one second. All right. Let's go to Cash in Gatsburg, Maryland. Cash. Ga Gatesburg. How are you? I'm going great. I got married in 2017, and I'm filing my I-751 mm -hmm. this year because my card expires next month. Mm -hmm. However, the first year, we filed our taxes together. The second year, we didn't file. We together, we do live together. We bought a house together. You got to file, file joint tax returns for every year. You need to prove it's a bona fide marriage. So you got to amend the taxes. To go and amend them. Um, yep. Okay, because he, there was an in Just go, there's no, there's no, to. there's no answers or buts. Just amend it. All right, thank you, Brad. You're welcome. Let's go to, not sure who this is. Let's cut out, see if I can, oh gosh. There we go. I'm not sure who I'm speaking with. Some Perez, perhaps? Perez? Kind of cut off, let's see. Monique. It's Monique from Hartford. Monique. Hi, Brad. Hi, how are you? Good night. I'm fine, thank you. What can I do to help you? So I came here from 2012. Um, I recently got married, but last year I got in some trouble and I was arrested. For I'm what? on probation now. For what? Someone came in my backyard and I had to defend myself. Someone came into your backyard and you had to defend Attacked yourself me. and you got arrested yeah. for assault? Yes. So not only did you defend yourself, but apparently you went on the offensive too. Um, where did this happen? Here in Hartford. And what ultimately did you plead guilty to? I didn't plead guilty. I had a lawyer and stuff, so now I'm on probation. Well, you pled guilty to something if you're on probation, because you wouldn't get probation if you didn't plead guilty to something. 
Well, my lawyer was the one who's talking for me, so. All right. So what you need to do is hold on. We got to figure out what you what happened there before I give you advice because you don't even know what happened yourself. So we'll just be talking in circles. So hold on one second. Rodrigo in Arlington, in Virginia. Rodrigo. <laughs> Rodrigo. There, yes. Uh, so my question is, um, I've been a permanent resident for 12 years. Right. Uh, last year, I was charged uh, with an embezzlement uh, case. Uh, I pled guilty, and they gave me two years of suspended uh, sentence and what was one the year probation. What was the embezzlement? The amount? Yeah. Uh, close, less than 10000 I think it was 8000 Okay, what, it was embezzled from who, where, what, how? Just quickly. Just uh, from my, it was uh, from an employee that okay. was, was working. Right. So it was yeah. less than $8,000, then it would be a crime of moral turpitude. If it was more than 10000 then it's an ag felony, and then you got a problem. Now, when did you get your green card, Rodrigo? Uh, I got it 12 years ago, just two years ago. I renew it for an, uh, another 10 years. And when did this offense happen? Uh, last year. It was before. I renew my, my green okay. card before this situation. Great. Now, this is your only time you've ever been arrested in your life? Uh, yes. My first, I mean, I got a... Uh, right. So, from, uh, from yeah. this is your deal. If you stay in the United States and don't travel, you're not deportable because you have a crime of moral turpitude because the embezzlement was less than $10,000. It's your one and only offense, and that crime of moral turpitude was committed more than seven years after your first entry into America and more than five years when you got your green card. That is not a deportable offense. Now, if you travel and come back into America, you may be found inadmissible depending on whether it's a petty offense or not. I would need to go look at that disposition to determine if it's a petty offense. I do know what you're describing to me is not deportable. I also know that if you stay put for five years, good moral character from the time you end with probation, because immigration is going to leave you alone as long as you don't travel. Five years from the time your probation is up, you file for your citizenship, you'll become a citizen. Assuming, oh, great. assuming, so assuming you do nothing, don't travel though, because if you travel, you could have a problem coming back. Yeah, that's yeah, what the I was laws told are different. You. The laws are different for traveling into America versus you're physically here and they're going to deport you. So what you have Got described it. to me, without me looking at your records, so I put this in quotes. I, I'm not going to give you a hundred percent till I see all your records. But what you're describing to me sounds like it's a crime of moral turpitude. It happened more than seven years after you entered America, more than five years after you had your green card. One crime of moral turpitude in that scenario is not a deportable offense. Wait five years from the end of your probation, you're good. Hold on, if you want me to actually confirm all of this. I'm basing it on what you're telling me. Hold on. Let's go to Joseph in McLean, Virginia. Joseph. Hi, Brad. Hi. Um, so I'm so glad to speaking with you today. Um, I've got this issue. Um, I got married in um, um, March 2018, and I filed in July 2018. Um, eventually, I got the EAD and advanced parole in um, November 2018. Right. Um, we got uh, the interview. I went with my wife and our daughter in April 2019. And um, I didn't get a response. I was told to wait 120 days. I didn't get a response. Um, whenever I called to find out the status of the, the situation, and they always say um, it's still within processing time. I should wait. I should wait. And I kept waiting. But um, so this week, um, I guess it was on Tuesday, um, I got this letter in my mail saying, um, due to unforeseen circumstances, uh, your interview scheduled for April, which I've gone to, the interview I've gone for, they said, your interview due for April 23rd has been canceled. Wait, wait, you went on an interview and then they canceled it after the fact? No, I, I went for the interview last year. Like Right, all right, so they year. scheduled you for a second interview, but you never got that notice. Right, 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 wait, 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 wait. You went on an interview, you didn't hear anything, and now you get a letter in the yeah. mail that your interview scheduled for April 2020 is canceled, but you never knew you had a second interview. Um, it was it was until yesterday that I checked. I kept checking since that day, and it was wait wait. Yesterday. Just I'm trying to understand your story because it's like all over the place. You went okay. for you went for an interview with your spouse at some point in the past. It was been more yeah, than 120 on days, of right? April. Okay, it's been more than 120 days. That was in April of 2019. You're now we're now January 2020, and you get a letter in mm -hmm. the mail saying that your interview scheduled for April 2019 has been canceled? Yes. 
That's what you're telling me? Yes. Well, obviously yes. that's a mistake because your interview was nine months ago and you went on it. So obviously that's a mistake. I, I would suggest you go down to the local office and try to speak to somebody. All right, so two, two problems I've got about that. The, um, um, in Maryland, there's no way I can book um, an info pass. I've been having issues with that. So yesterday, I kept tracking uh, my status of, of the application. So yesterday, I got a, I got a notice on um, the online status, which says, um, on January 6, 2020, we scheduled an interview for your I, I mean, for your form I-485. We will mail you an interview notice. All right, so you're gonna get a new. You're gonna. Yesterday. All right, so you're gonna get a new interview notice shortly. Oh my god! All right, if you like, need, uh, you're asking me why immigration hasn't mailed you a notice yet for your interview, even though it says online. What, yeah, what, I, I what would you, first, Joseph? Like, what would they Joseph, what an would, interview that was held Joseph, already? you're asking me why immigration wrote a wrong letter to you. And, yeah. I, and I am telling you, I don't have the slightest idea why immigration, it's, it's obviously a mistake and needs to be fixed. So you can okay. call them, you can write them, you can go down. You're like, I can't go down, there's nothing I can do. So I, and then you okay. tell me, well, online, they just changed the online status yesterday. They're going to send me a letter in the mail. So I said, okay, wait for the letter in the mail. I, okay. More than that, what can I, what can I tell you? Uh, I mean, you want my okay. help? I can go, I can have somebody contact immigration on your behalf. But I can't. I, what more can I tell you on a live show? Okay, I understand. I right, understand. Hold on. I Thanks for watching. For more Brad Show Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.